Yo what's going on guys Tanmay here for simple snippets and welcome back to another video tutorial on data structures and algorithms and as the title of the video suggests today's topic is C++ program to implement infix to prefix conversion using a stack data structure yes this is the practical side of infix to prefix using stack data structure and and if you've missed the part 1 where we've discussed the pseudo code discussed the rules that are involved when we convert a infix expression to a prefix expression please do watch the previous video that is absolutely important because only then you will understand this code very easily but if you are just here to see the practical side the implementation side then please make sure you watch this video till the end and i highly recommend that you type this code along with me for the best practice i'm obviously going to be sharing this code as well as some theory related to infix to prefix using stack data structure you can find that article in the video description on our official website and with that being said let's get started if you're new to my channel my name is tanmay sakpal and i do a lot of computer science and information technology video tutorials like computer programming development technology talks and a lot more on this channel so if that's something you're interested into then definitely subscribe and turn on the notifications to get the latest updates and never miss out on such important topics okay so our goal is to take a infix string and convert that infix expression to a prefix expression Over here, as you can see, I've already opened up my Dave C plus plus ID. I've already typed some little bit of code, and I'll explain to you what it is. You can pause this screen and type this code yourself. But basically, in the main function, so it's a C plus plus program, but you can use any other general purpose programming language. The pseudo code is going to be the same. I've put the pseudo code on the right hand side. You can see. So coming to the main function, we are creating two strings: string infix and string prefix. We ask the user to enter an infix expression. we take it in the infix string by the way this string is c++ style string and not the regular c style string if you don't know the difference i have a separate video basically it is a object then we create a stack which is a template coming from the standard template library which is provided in c++ so standard template library is nothing but a collection of standard data structures collection of functions and some algorithms which are used frequently so they have already prebuilt it for us in the form of templates and hence this syntax of you know angular brackets if you don't know what templates are i have again covered what is templates in another tutorial in the c++ course so i'll link that video as well so this stack basically is coming from the standard template library and hence over here you can see i have said hash include stack which includes all the stack related functions and classes and operations into our program okay so we create a object of stack and this stack is going to store character elements so that's why we've given char in the angular brackets so this template is going to take character value then we simply print out the infix expression and then we say prefix is equal to we call a user defined function infix to prefix which we still have to create and that is exactly what is going to have the entire pseudo code which you can see on the right hand side inside that we pass the stack and the infix string and once this function finishes its execution obviously it will return a string which is going to be a prefix string for this infix string basically and then we will print that out saying pre prefix expression is equal to prefix okay this is the int main function i did not type it out from scratch because it will just waste some time but now let's get started with creating this user defined infix to prefix function obviously it is returning a string so the return type is going to be string obviously now this function takes two parameters you can see it is taking the stack which is of character type so that we have to define over here and the second is a string infix okay so infix we are passing and let's name this as stack only or let's keep it s for simplicity purpose so you can see first argument is a stack object of character type so s so when we pass stack it is passed as s and then we pass this infix string so that's why string infix so two arguments inside this user defined function and now we can start writing and following the pseudo code now if you see in the pseudo code the very first statement is to reverse this infix string right before reversing we will create a string prefix also because ultimately we will return this prefix string from this infix to prefix function so the last statement is obviously going to be a return statement and we will return this prefix string and everything else will be in between this entire two statements so first we create the string and whatever changes happen and whatever the algorithm 
makes change to this infix string, we will store in this prefix string, okay? And then lastly, we will return this prefix string. But anyways, after this, we have to completely reverse this infix string. So to do that, we can write our own custom function or we can use some existing function which is predefined and we can directly use it. And we are going to use this methodology where we are going to use a predefined function for the reversal. The function name is reverse and it will not run by default. You need to include this header file hash include algorithm which has these predefined functions which can be used to perform some algorithmic calculations. In our case, we want to reverse a string. The first argument is infix.begin. So this string dot begin, which means the very beginning point of the string that is index version zero. And the second argument is infix dot end. So this reverse function, which is predefined function in the hash include algorithm header file basically takes two arguments and the two arguments are the start and the end point of the string that you want to reverse. So it will take the start point and the end point and it will reverse everything from that start till the end point. Okay. In our case, since we want to reverse the entire string, we say infix.begin and infix.end. So now the string is reversed, but remember that when we do the reversal, we also want to flip the brackets. So opening bracket becomes closing bracket and closing bracket becomes opening bracket if the infix expression has any brackets, right? So for that, we need to type some custom code. So we will write a loop. We will say for int i equals to zero, i less than infix of length. So now this infix expression is reversed, right? After this reverse function. Then we call a for loop. We will start from the zero index position till the end index position that is infix dot length and i plus plus. Inside the for loop, we will say if we get a opening bracket, that is if infix of i is an opening bracket, make that as a closing bracket. So we will change it to closing bracket. And in the else if part, we will say else if infix of i is a closing bracket, make it a opening bracket. So this if and else if will only execute respectively when we get an opening bracket or a closing bracket. So if we get an opening bracket, this F block will be executed and we will convert that opening bracket to a closing bracket. If we get a closing bracket, then else if part will be executed, not the if, if part. And we will make that closing bracket as a opening bracket. So basic enough, we will run this loop from I equals to zero till infix of length. So I less than infix of length and I plus plus basic. And after this, we have reversed the infix string and we've also flipped the opening and closing brackets if that infix string has any opening or closing brackets. Okay, so so far in the pseudocode, we've done the reversal and now we need to start with the main loop that is iterating from the start of this reversed infix string till the end of the infix string. And we need to apply all these four different conditions for four different types of characters that we will encounter that we've discussed in the previous tutorial. So in the infix string, we can have four different types of characters. We will either have operands, operands are A, B, C and all the characters or constants or variables. Then we have operators, operators can be plus minus, multiplication, divide by and raise to. And the last two types is an opening bracket or a closing bracket. The reason why we are not considering opening and closing bracket as operands is because they do not do any operation, right? They only decide which part of the expression happens first. That's why we are not considering them as operators. We are considering them separate entities. So that's why we have separate rules for them. So now again, we will type one more for loop, which is again gonna start from i equals to zero till i less than infix of length. Now this dot length is a predefined method in the string class because this is a string object. So it will also have its corresponding methods. It's, it's a C++ style string, not a C style string. And that's why we can take advantage of these inbuilt methods which come along with those class objects. So in the for loop, the very first condition is to check if it is an operand. So how do we check programmatically whether the incoming character in the infix string in the reversed infix string is a operand or not, which means we just want to check whether it is any character between small a to small z or z or capital A to capital Z. So programmatically, this is how it would look like. We will say if infix of I is greater than or equal to character A that is small a and infix of i is less than or equal to character Z or there is a or in between. Let me just get it in one line. Now you can see there is a or in between. 
and then the second condition is if infix of i is greater than equal to capital a and infix of i is less than equal to capital z now all the characters from a to z have consecutive ascii codes if you've seen the ascii table of these individual characters after a the ascii value of b is just right next to it and hence we can give this kind of range so any character in between this range will be a character itself a small character for this condition and a capital character for this condition so we are covering both the conditions with a composite or clause in between and if it is a character that is if it is a operand in that case we simply add that character add that operand into the prefix string that we've created on top so we say prefix plus equal to which means we are just appending this character into the existing prefix string so prefix is equal to prefix plus infix is what this statement means so whatever is there in the existing prefix string will already be there and we will just append this extra new infix of i okay so this is first condition now in the algorithms the second condition you can see is for if infix of i is a opening bracket if it is a opening bracket we simply push it onto the stack so stack dot push right so let's write else if we will say else if infix of i is equal equal to a opening bracket in that case we say s dot push and we pass infix of i so remember infix is basically a string so every character in that string will have a index position as well and hence we can use this square brackets and give the index position to access that particular index position in that string okay so even though this string infix is a string class object it still operates like a array only which can take indexes and give that particular character at that particular index okay so that's why we are saying if infix of i is equal equal to a opening bracket just push it onto the stack so s is basically this stack that we've created in the int main you can see we've created a stack over here stack char stack and we've passed it as a argument in the infix to prefix function so we pass it as s and hence we can access that stack with the name of s and since it is a object it will have its standard functions a stack has its standard methods what are the methods of a standard stack we have push we have pop we have top and we have a bunch of other standard methods of a stack now the reason why we are using this predefined stack is because our main focus of this tutorial is not to create a stack class from scratch but to do the conversion of infix to prefix so that's why we are directly using a predefined stack if you want to know what is a stack data structure and how you can create your own stack data structure i have a separate tutorial in this playlist as well you can go check that out but moving on this else if condition is done we have pushed the infix of i onto the stack if it is a opening bracket the next else if is for a closing bracket you can see else if infix of i is a closing bracket we have to do pop and print stack values till a opening bracket is found and stack not empty and if that opening bracket is found just remove it off okay so let's write else if and in the condition we say if infix of i is a closing bracket in that case we have to do the pop and print when i say pop and print basically remove the top of the stack and append it into our prefix string and then pop that same top of the stack outside the stack but we have to keep doing that till we get a opening bracket or till the stack is empty so basically the code will look something like so it's a while loop we say while s dot top is not equal to a opening bracket and stack is not empty till that time you keep popping the top of stack and putting it into the prefix string so what we do we say char temp we create a temporary character variable and we say s dot top so s dot top means whatever is at the top of the stack you take it out and put it in this temporary character variable then we say prefix plus equal to temp so whatever we just stored in this temporary variable which came from the top of the stack we now append it into our prefix string and then lastly we say s dot pop so now we just pop the top of the stack because whenever we call pop function or pop method of a stack it basically means to remove the top of the stack okay that's what standard pop does in a stack data structure because stack works in last in first out methodology so you could have skipped this part directly and you know you can directly say prefix plus equal to 
as dot top instead of storing it in a temporary variable. So whatever is there at the top is getting appended to the prefix string and then we remove that top by saying as dot pop. Okay. And this will keep on happening till the as dot top is not equal to a opening bracket and till the stack is not empty. So if any of the one condition out, out of these two conditions becomes true, that is if we get an opening bracket, then this while loop will stop working. Or if we get stack empty, that, that is if stack becomes empty, again this while loop will stop working. After this, if the top of the stack is an opening bracket, we simply need to discard it. Because remember in our prefix expression, we do not want any opening or closing brackets. So this while loop will keep on executing till we get an opening bracket and after we get an opening bracket, we completely remove that by saying s dot pop. Here we only do s dot pop and not prefix plus equal to because we don't want to append this bracket into our prefix expression. So this was the else if condition for a closing bracket. And now comes the last else if which is for if the infix of i is an operator. Now you can directly say else because ultimately if the infix of i is not a operand, if it is not an opening bracket, if it, if it is not a closing bracket, it will mean that it is obviously an operator because that's the only fourth type of character in the infix string. But just in case if you're using an else if structure, in that case you need to give something over here. So in the else if what you can do, you can say else if and you can check that over here if it is an operator or not, you can say else if infix of i is plus or infix of i is a minus or infix of i is a star which is multiplication or infix of i is a divide by which is division or infix of i is a raise to sign which is exponent operator. So if infix of i is any of these five different characters it means that it is an operator. Now in infix to postfix code we wrote a separate function which was returning a, a boolean type true or false depending upon whether the character that the argument is passed into that function is an operator or not you can do that also basically what I'm trying to say is come at the top of our infix to prefix function and just create this extra custom function saying bool is operator the argument is a character and if that character is plus minus star divided by an raise to return true else returns false so this is our own user defined function to determine whether it is an operator or not. You can use this also over here. Instead of checking it over here, you can just say is operator and pass infix of i. That is the current character in the infix string that we are scanning. So if it is true, obviously the else if block will be executed. If not, we will not execute this part. So in this else if we have the first condition that is if stack is empty, then push the operator onto the stack. So again, we will check if s dot empty. So empty is again a predefined method of stack, which gives us either true or false, depending upon whether the stack is empty or not. So we say if s dot empty, in that case, s dot push infix of i. Simply push that operator into the stack. Now, if the stack is not empty and we still have an operator in the else part, this is where we have to check for the precedence of the infix of i and the top of the stack. So for this, we have to create our separate precedence function. And what that precedence function will do is it will take a character that is it will take the operator and it will give its corresponding precedence. So just scroll on the top. I'll show you how the precedence function will look like. Hit enter over here. So this is how our precedence function will look like. We will say int precedence. So the return type of this function is integer. It will take a character and depending upon if it is a raise to, we will return three. So raise to has the highest precedence. So that's why it will return the highest value that is three. In the else if we will say if the character is a star or a divide by, we will return two because the next higher precedence is a star and divide by operator that is multiplication and division. Then we will say else if c is a plus or a minus in that case return one because plus and minus have the next higher precedence after multiplication and division. And if it is none of these, so in the else part, we will say return minus. So if we get a opening or closing bracket in that case, we will get a minus one. So remember 
in the manual conversion the opening and closing bracket had the highest precedence but when you actually implement this program or implement the logic of infix to prefix using stack data structure in the form of a program in that case we do not consider the opening and closing bracket as operators that's why we are giving it a minus 1 precedence because all the operators will have higher precedence than a opening and closing bracket okay and this is only when you are actually writing a program or when you are thinking programmatically the implementation side so now coming down again in the else part the first check is we have to check if the precedence of infix of i is greater than the precedence of stack of top in that case you have to push the infix of i onto the stack so i'm going to say if precedence let me just copy the function name so that we don't make any mistake we say if precedence of infix of i is greater than precedence of s dot top in that case we simply have to push the infix of i don't forget to you know add these semicolons so we simply have to push this infix of i onto the stack the next condition is if precedence of infix of i is equal to the precedence of s dot top and if it is a raised to sign so for raised to sign we have a separate condition because when we have multiple raised to operators we go from right to left that is the associativity is from right to left so that is different compared to all the other operators that's why we have a separate operation when we get multiple raised to operators so the second else if is going to be like this i'm copy pasting code because i don't want to waste time i'll quickly explain what it is so we say else if precedence of infix of i is equal equal to precedence of top and so there is a and clause in between and the infix of i is a raised to sign so if infix of i is a raised to sign and if precedence of infix of i is equal to precedence of s dot top obviously what does this mean this means that the s dot top is also a raised to operator because only raised to operator has the highest precedence that is 3 and if the precedence of infix of i is matching with the precedence of s dot top and if infix of i is a raised to operator obviously the s dot top is also a raised to operator in that case what we want to do we want to pop this s dot top and put it into the prefix string and then again check this same condition that is whether the precedence of infix of i is equal equal to this new top okay so the condition goes as follows that is the same condition while precedence of infix of i is equal equal to precedence of top and infix of i is a raised to operator that is a exponent operator obviously this is always going to be true in that case you just say s dot top and put it and append it into the prefix string and then pop the s dot top so the top of the stack is popped off so now that raised to operator from the top of the stack is removed so we might get some other operator and in that case this while condition will not become true let's say in the stack we had a raised to operator at the top and once we popped it out let's say we have a multiplication operator so in that case precedence of infix of i that is precedence of raised to operator that is 3 will not be equal equal to precedence of s dot top that is precedence of star precedence of multiplication is 2 so 3 is not equal to 2 and this while loop will stop working so lastly we simply have to push this infix of i that is push this raised to operator onto the stack so after this while loop we have this instruction which says s dot push this infix of i okay so this was the second else if condition now the third else if is where we have similar condition but this time we don't have and clause which means over here it is for precedence of infix of i is equal equal to precedence of top but this operator can be multiplication and division or it can be plus and minus because multiplication and division have same precedence plus and minus have same precedence so for them remember the associativity is from left to right so in that case we don't want to pop them out of the top and put it into the prefix string we want to you know push the infix of i on to the stack so that you can see in the pseudo code as well so i'm going to say s dot push now the last condition is where the precedence of infix of i is less than the precedence of s dot top so that you can simply write in the else block you don't have to say else if precedence of infix of i is less than precedence of top obviously if the first four if and else if blocks did not execute what it would mean it would only mean that the precedence of infix of i is obviously less than the precedence of s dot top because only that condition is left after these first three conditions so the else part will only be executed so in the else part we want to simply take the top of the stack append it into the prefix string and pop that top of the stack and we have to do it till 
stack is not empty and till the precedence of infix of i is less than the precedence of s dot top so these two conditions are important to remember and we have a and in between so the while loop will keep on executing till the stack is not empty and till the precedence of infix of i is less than the precedence of s dot top so every time the s dot top will be stored and appended into the prefix string and then it will be popped off it will be removed after this while loop is done we will simply say s dot push that is take this incoming operator and push it onto the stack okay so these were the four different conditions when we get a operator and the stack is not empty and this is specific for infix to prefix okay so if you've seen a code where it is said that we just have to take the infix to postfix logic and apply it as it is after reversing the infix string then it will not work in infix to postfix many of the conditions are similar to infix to prefix however this four conditions are slightly different in infix to postfix there is slight variation now after this obviously we will end the for loop so where is the end of the for loop this is that for loop let's see where it ends okay the for loop ends over here after this there might be some operators left in the stack so we simply say while stack not empty just take the top of the stack append it to the prefix string and s dot pop right so that so this code takes care of this pseudo code line pop and print remaining elements of the stack and the last thing is we have to again reverse this prefix string and return it from this function so at the top we did the reverse you can see just copy this code paste it over here and in the place of infix we say prefix because we've built the prefix string over here now we simply have to reverse it so we say prefix of begin till prefix of end we have to reverse everything in between beginning and end so starting from beginning till the end and now the prefix string will be reversed and we will actually return this prefix string from this infix to prefix function user defined function which will actually give us the final answer okay so let's save this and let's see if this works go to execute compile and run this is the first run we might get some errors okay so everything seems to be working fine let's see and let's put that infix expression which we solved in the previous tutorial so i'm going to enter this entire infix string this is the exact infix string that we took as an example in the previous tutorial as well let's hit enter and there you go you can see our prefix expression is exactly matching the result that we got in the previous tutorial as well so if you dry run or if you do the manual conversion also you'll get this very same prefix expression so in fact what you can do is quickly pause this video take a pen and paper take this infix string and convert it to prefix format manually we've already seen how the manual conversion also goes and then you can cross verify with the output of this program let's actually do a simple one also for cross checking for verifying purpose we will say a plus b star c now just by looking at it the prefix should look like the star will come to the left of bc and plus will also get to the left so it would be plus a star bc right so if i hit enter you can see the prefix format is plus a star bc which means our program is working perfectly fine and we've successfully implemented infix to prefix using stack data structure in a c++ program so the practical side is done okay so that's it for this video guys i hope you like this video i hope you understood the practical side of programming side of infix to prefix using stack data structure as i've mentioned earlier i'm obviously going to be sharing this code sharing some theory details of infix to prefix using stack data structure with you on our official website so you can see the link to that article in our video description if you watched this video so far if you liked it please give it a thumbs up that helps a lot let me know in the comments how this video was do share it with your friends and i'll see you guys in the next video peace